Hi, and welcome to Answers News for October 26, 2017. And um, we're still missing Ken. He's yeah, over in the UK. We are just talking um, to our audience about, uh, he, we're having a, we call it the UK Creation Mega Conference. Mm -hmm. And um, I just was seeing he had done a video, I think it was from last night maybe, where yeah. they had like uh, thousands uh, well, about 1,700 people pouring into the auditorium there, which is really, really big for a conference in the UK um, on yeah. these topics. Yeah, it was so, good. Yeah, it's really so, exciting. Yeah, to we want to encourage that. He should be back next week. Should be, yeah. That's you know, barring any flight problems. You know, I mean, th there's never flight problems, right? I mean, nobody loses luggage nowadays. No, never. Or there's no delays. <laughs> for those of you who fly a little bit, I see you out there smiling. We got a we got a studio audience out here today. Do you guys want to say hello? Clap your hands. Yeah, there they are. All right. All right. Well, welcome to the live show. Okay, um, well, we're going to start off, we always start off with a little bit of fluff and stuff so that people, <laughs> once they get notified, can get on here. So, <laughs> Bodie brought this over this morning and said, we got to do we this article. This. <laughs> Man flies over South Africa using 100 balloons strapped to a camping chair. And he did it on purpose, actually. <laughs> was, <laughs> when I enough. first saw the article, I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. This reminds me of the, what was that Disney show? Uh, up. Up. No, yeah, uh, the where, where, where they mm -hmm. fly up, he flies his whole house up. But uh, yeah, he actually uh, planned to do this, and he wanted to make sure he did it where there was good weather, and so he ended up in South Africa. I guess he tried elsewhere, but know. ran into some problems. But <laughs> I guess he said it was uh, quite exhilarating. <laughs> yeah, cold but, probably too, I'm sure. Yeah, I he's think up he, that he, high. He went, I, I think it was almost 8,000 feet high. It was about, wow. a, about the height that he got to, yeah. bursting balloons. And mm -hmm. that would have made me a little nervous, especially in a camping chair. I, <laughs> I wonder, did he, did, did he put a seatbelt on? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, holding yeah. on for dear life. We're not but, recommending anyone try this that's at right. home, okay? So... Um, yeah. Probably not a wise thing. That's All right. right. Well, it looks like lots of people are getting on here. So All right. we'll go well, ahead get, and get started. Get into it then. Here. So our first um, article um, comes from the Christian, uh, the Gospel Herald Society. Christian magistrate fired for speaking out against gay adoption loses religious discrimination case. So basically this magistrate in the UK um, was fired from his position because he was opposed to same-sex couples adopting children. And it's not so much, my understanding is, it's not so much that he was um, holding that view in his workplace in the sense mm -hmm. of he was denying those adoptions, but rather right. he, he personally held um, that particular view and went on television about it. Right. And, he, and once he talked about it, you know, they just, boy, they, they said, you're done. Um, so he actually ended up losing the case. Right. So, uh, you know, and, and you know what? We've seen more and more of this kind of stuff happening over there. You're not allowed to have the freedom of speech to speak out against yeah. these sorts of things or you're going to be attacked. Right. And so here's a Christian being attacked for that sort of thing. Yeah. We just, yeah. it seems like almost every day, because, you know, we're obviously gathering mm -hmm. these articles for this news broadcast. There's, there's some, somebody somewhere mm -hmm. who's experiencing this kind of discrimination because, heaven forbid, um, right. they have a personal view uh, that this is wrong. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's and, interesting. And you know, it wasn't that just that he was trying to single out, you know, same-sex mm -hmm. uh, adoption. You know, he was pointing out that, you know, I, ideally you want to have a mother and a father. He's like, that's a really good thing. You know, he, he even struggled with uh, single uh, parent parents. adoptions and mm -hmm. things like that too, but boy, as soon as he said same sex, they yeah. they just attacked him. That's the key word, <laughs> yeah, so to the, speak, the buzzword. One of the quotes in here uh, that uh, was quite fascinating was, if the tribunal is suggesting that there are places in which an individual does not enjoy the fundamental right of freedom of religious expression, this is a cause for concern. It could have a chilling effect on freedom of belief and expression. Yeah. Now, the point is, welcome to that. That's what's happening. You see, from a Christian viewpoint, that's why people have the freedom of thought, freedom right. of speech, of freedom mm -hmm. of religion, and that sort of thing. But as soon as you throw God out of it, why have that type of freedom? Right. Yeah. And that's what's happening. People are starting to impose yeah. it. Uh, I mean, sadly, we saw this type of thing happening back at the time of uh, World War II in Nazi Germany. You did not, mm -hmm. you were not permitted certain types of freedom of thought. Right. Uh, otherwise, you were singled out and you were attacked. And we're starting to see the same thing happen again. Yeah, and I think it's important too to understand because people say, "Well, you're prejudicing against a certain group of people," and you know, okay. But the thing is, there's, you know, I would not prejudice against someone who has a different skin shade than I do because that would be unbiblical. Um, there are certain things that, you know, when they are when they're clearly against God's word, and, and homosexuality is, 
then we have to be in opposition to that in order to be in accordance with God's word. Um, other things mm -hmm. we should not be. So we have to draw yeah. that line um, and, and understand that as well. So, Okay, um, Apple censored pro-life group by dropping app, activists say. Yeah, this Oops, is uh, Apple Computer Company. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. I do like their products. <laughs> um, but, yeah. but what happened was basically this was the, um, it was an app by an organization called Human Coalition. Human Coalition, that's right. And they allowed you on this app apparently to be able to pray for people that were considering abortion. So they mm -hmm. would have these notifications go out and you could, you know, know yeah, people to People all over that. the place would get the notification. They would pray. And, uh, yeah, I mean, really what happened was, uh, you know, some, some people who absolutely mm -hmm. love abortion and, yeah. you know, hate the, the pro-life stance, you know, started to send uh, comments to Apple and their brass said, well, you know what, let's pull it from the, from the web store. And so they've yanked it off of there. Right. And they, and they had said, of course, well, we didn't yank it off for that reason. Yeah. Um, it didn't meet certain uh, functionality requirements. And and Human Coalition actually spoke with Apple and said, no, we meet the minimum requirements and then some uh, to be able to have this app. So it's clearly, again, another case of discrimination. And, mm -hmm. But one thing I think it's important, though, for people to really speak out, um, because what happened, they talk about something that happened on Twitter, actually, where they were going to ban a certain pro-life ad uh, by a certain person that was campaigning. And uh, people got upset about it and, and really, you know, it, yeah. there was a lot of backlash against it. And so then Twitter allowed the ad. So mm -hmm. it's important for people to speak up and say things because you can make a difference um, yeah. when you do that. Well, I pulled up the, the Apple App Store and the Planned Parenthood Care app still comes up. So that one's still Shocking. there. I yeah. wonder what would happen if a lot of Christians would start sending uh, messages to Apple saying, hey, get this off of here. This offends me. You know, uh, what would the brass do on something like that? I mean, yeah. when it comes to abortion, this is child sacrifice. Mm -hmm. This is what's happening. Yep. And so much uh, in our culture, you know, they give it a different name, abortion, and all of a sudden people don't think th as much about it. Mm -hmm. But that's what's happening in our culture, and it breaks my heart to see this, but that's what it is. It's child yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, oh, and just a reminder too, if you're watching on Facebook, to hit that, hit those emojis and get those going across. Oh, get because those going across. the more emojis that it gets, the more it goes out and has a farther reach. And we definitely <laughs> want as many people as possible to um, to hear about it. Somebody said yeah. on here, those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's very, a powerful statement. Yeah. When you know, we're really dealing is. with a lot of these things, this has happened in the past, and now it's happening in the, in today mm -hmm. with a lot of Christian groups. All right, from the American Spectator, it's official. The left has abandoned evolution. And yet they have pictures of penguins. Look at that. That's just, <laughs> that's just beautiful. That's right? a nice picture. <laughs> but, you know, when I first saw the title, I was like, what are they talking about? And they said it's pursuit of social justice now trumps science every time. Mm -hmm. And what they're basically saying is, you know, with this whole confusion over gender and is it really male and female and you can switch anytime you want and you don't have to be the sex that you mm -hmm. were born with. They said that really goes against evolution, evolutionary science, because with evolutionary science, the key is reproduction, especially sexual reproduction specifically. So well, without it, that, you don't get anything. Right. And, and so <laughs> it, to say that there's no gender, there's no sex, you can be whatever you want to be, whenever you want to be, it's really anti-evolution right. in so I mean, many Yeah, ways. believe it or not, evolutionists and creationists would probably agree on something yeah. for once. <laughs> uh, you know, so, so there's that. So what they're doing is they're actually just saying, well, you know what, let's just throw out the, the science, which what they mean by that, they're throwing right. out the evolution, and in many cases they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater, throwing science out then. You know, because there is a difference between science and evolution. Now, we're in a culture right. where a lot of people want to equate uh, evolution as science, and they want to just equivocate on those terms, but that's actually fallacious. But uh, they're, they're starting to do that. They're just saying, well, right. fine, we're just going to get rid of science, and we're just going to go ahead and do uh, whatever we want. Well, they're trying to say, too, a lot of, a lot of times the, the left is saying, well, that that sex and gender are separate. You know, we see that yeah. all the time. Well, you're born maybe a certain biological sex, but you can be whatever gender you want to be. But there's no, that's not scientific. Yeah. Um, actually, there's no separation of those. That's a false separation that people are making in order to justify what they want to do, in order to justify their actions. You know, I think the last time we were, in, we were chatting about something like this, I, I think we pointed out that Facebook had recognized about 50 different 50, genders. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed in this article, it says about 58 different 58 genders. 58 different genders. 58. That, that you can be, according to Facebook. Facebook. 
Yeah. And so, and, and it's, and it is really, pro, it is very problematic because one of the things that the article brings out. Now, the author mm. of this article, I think, does believe in evolution. Um, yeah, I think but, they do. Yeah. But one of the things he says is, well, but men and women are hardwired differently and mm. therefore likely evolved differently. Now, we obviously don't believe they evolved; they were created. How would that work anyway? I mean, do you have yeah. millions of years of women and no men? I mean, well. Yeah, that's the whole the whole evolution yeah, of how I mean, we I, got yeah two genders in see, the first place. This is what place, happens when but, people throw those statements right. out there real quick and they don't don't. But we're around, but, but we're both men and women are created in the image of God and we express that image differently mm -hmm. and it makes it complete and that's mm -hmm. good. We want differences. Yeah. We don't want sameness. You don't want everybody to be the same. Right. Um, you want that. You want those. Well, differences. You know, one, of, one of the statements it says in here is by diluting the binary nature of sex and to some degree stigmatizing heterosexuality, mm -hmm. and then they go forth. You know what they're arguing right there? They're, they're basically saying you, you have to have male and female to have sex to keep everything going. Right. But see, that's actually an attack on homosexuality as well. And I wonder right. if they realize yeah. that, that, they're, that they're making a double-lined attack here in their article. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they, they realize that or not. Yeah, but they do talk about how males and females are sort of, you know, geared differently. Um, they, said, mm -hmm. they talk about, there's been numerous articles that show this, but male brains are yeah. more geared towards um, figuring things out, and female brains are more concerned with understanding people. Now, it's not to say that there can't be female scientists and engineers. I'm a female scientist, and some, some women are, are more kind of geared towards yeah. that. But for the majority, it's, it's, it's yeah, especially was, in engineering. When I was back in engineering, you know, it was, it was yeah. predominantly men. I mean, I knew mm -hmm. some, some wonderful women that right. made great engineers. I've worked with some over the years, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I would say the majority probably are men. But when you look at things like even teachers, especially at the elementary level, it's predominantly female. Well, and you know, that, that was one of the things we used to talk about at the university. Um, you know, if we saw a guy and you say, well, what, what was your major? And they say EE, e., you knew they meant electrical engineering. If it was a girl and they said EE, e., you knew elementary education. I mean, <laughs> we would sometimes joke about that. But there's nothing that, wrong but. with that. I mean, it, it, that's a good thing. We want mm -hmm. differences. They, women and men complement yeah. one another in that sense. And so mm -hmm. those, are, those are good things to have, yeah. and we don't want to erase that. Yeah, well, so. you know, to, uh, toward the end of this article, it says, just ask James Daymore, the Google engineer who was fired for pointing out that the tech giant's diversity policy policies ignored fundamental differences in the psychology of the sexes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. He got canned for something like that, you know, where he's arguing that there was a binary. There's a male and there's a female. Right. And yet all the while, here's Google, right? Mm -hmm. The majority of what, how, how Google survives is on code systems of binary systems, zeros yeah. and ones. <laughs> Imagine if somebody came in and said, well, the zeros are actually ones, or they can be one of 58 different things, and the zeros, and I, I mean, it would yeah. be so convoluted, it wouldn't make any sense. Right. They, would, right. they would be laughed at on something mm -hmm. like that, and yet, here they are criticizing they are. that when yeah. it comes to male yeah, and female. Yeah, exactly. So, it, it is kind of interesting, but um, they, and that's what the left, the left quote unquote, needs to realize, yeah. is you're, you're kind of doing away you're eating yeah. your own <laughs> yeah. you're doing away with your own position well you know i've had a lot of people come up to me and they say why is our culture like this why is it so uh, so deranged why mm -hmm. why can't people think properly why can't they just right. follow what the bible says and it's interesting you know I, I looked up in the bible there's a number of passages that actually speak to that uh, titus 1 15 for example says to the pure all things are pure but to those who are defiled and unbelieving nothing is pure but even their mind and consciences are defiled Romans chapter 1 says, and even, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind. Yeah, you can keep reading this sort of thing. You see it in Corinthians. You see it in Timothy. You know, when people don't want to believe in God or they throw God out, God basically gives their mind over to right. think improper yep. thoughts. Yep. He basically gives them over to Satan, to the God of this world, the way it's described uh, there in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4. And you know, I, I see something like that and I say, okay, our culture for years now has been trying to throw God out. Mm -hmm. We've thrown him out left and right. And we well wonder why people can't think right. Right. It yeah, makes sense, exactly. actually. That's exactly right. So we need to be praying for this country. We need mm -hmm. to be praying for the church to get back to the authority of the Word of God. Yeah. All right, from Fox News, you may be more Neanderthal than you thought. <laughs> um, so basically, they've um, sequenced, they've, we've had the um, Neanderthal genome, or at least a genome from a particular Neanderthal um, that lived about a, 122,000 years ago. That's imaginary time. According, That's the yeah, secular According to conventional line, dating. Yeah. But they've now been able to sequence DNA from, and that one lived, the one, 
the one that was 122,000 years old lived in Siberia. So now they've been able to find one that lived in Croatia, and they've been able to get DNA from her, and that was only about 52,000 years ago. Both of these are post-flood, by the way. <laughs> yeah. It's found in post-flood sediment. Right, yeah. so it's after the flood, so it's only about 4,000 years ago. Descendants of Noah. Right. So they, yeah. and they've always asked me, and when they say like how much Neanderthal you are, it's not that Neanderthals have certain genes that humans don't or right. something like that. It's just that Neanderthals are fully human. I mean, when we look at the DNA, when we look at the archaeological mm -hmm. um, data associated with yeah. them, there's no question that they're fully human. They but, wore clothes, they buried right. their dead, they made musical they made, instruments, yeah, they, they made jewelry, they yeah. painted, all of that. But basically it means that we have certain variations in our mm -hmm. DNA that are more, that are basically the most similar to or match that of Neanderthals. We don't, may not see it as much in the human population, we see mm -hmm. it more, you know, today, but we see it more in the Neanderthal population. So, Mm -hmm. Now they're saying some people who, at least those that live outside of Africa, may have mm -hmm. more Neanderthal DNA than, than others. And I think yeah. that may just be based on a location thing, because mm -hmm. we really think a lot of times the Neanderthal populations, because they have very certain characteristics, they probably mainly stayed um, and married within their own groups and didn't marry a lot with outside groups. And right. so, yeah, it wasn't until the time of Moses that God said no more close intermarriage, actually. Right. So, you know, before that... You know, Abraham married his half-sister. You know, I mean, we see a lot of examples mm -hmm. of that. But what we have to do, we have to watch out too. You know, as I was reading through this, this whole article is written from the out-of-Africa model. This right. is the Darwin model that you evolved out of Africa because we find apes there, and so mm -hmm. therefore we had to mm -hmm. uh, evolve from that particular model. So we had to watch out for that kind of stuff and be discerning when we look at it. But now, see, I knew you'd be talking about the genetics in here, you know, <laughs> geneticist. So I decided I'm going to look up some history because I love history. I lo you know, I love that kind of stuff. Uh, Neanderthals. Do you know what Neanderthals are actually named from? Joachim Neander. Okay, he was a German uh, hymn writer. He was a wonderful Christian man, lived in the 1600s. Uh, he, uh, he, he, you know, probably one of the most famous songs of his was uh, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Do you guys remember how that one goes? Praise to the Lord the Almighty, okay, the sense. King of <laughs> creation. Okay, they get it. Yeah, okay. Well, it wasn't until 1856 that they found the first Neanderthal. They named it Neanderthal because it was found, Thal means valley, or Neanderthal means valley in German. Mm -hmm. So it was the Neander Valley. It was basically on his farm is where they found it. So, you know, this alleged mm -hmm. missing link for all these years was actually name, right? named for a wonderful Christian hymn writer, and yeah. most people probably didn't realize that. It is but. amazing. We can even see in the Neanderthal DNA that there's not as many differences between Neanderthal individuals as there are between individuals today. And so that's an indication that there was um, a lot of basically marrying within the group, yeah. which may be why certain characteristics became very, very dominant, like the pronounced brow ridges and mm -hmm. things like that yeah. as a result of that. So it's very easy to explain within the creationist um, perspective. It's just not right. tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years that's ago. Right. It's just a few thousand years yeah, ago. Yeah, a matter of thousands. All right. Ancient teeth found in Europe belong to mystery primate. All right, so here we go again. All right. <laughs> Yet another story of supposedly when and where um, human evolution started to occur. So mm -hmm. again, we were just talking about the out of Africa model, um, and right. that's the one that's, that's typically they want to try to stick to. Camps, right. Yeah. But then there's been more and more information seeming mm -hmm. coming out of Europe that, well, maybe it started here, or mm -hmm. maybe they, it was both, or something right. like we that. We see North Africa, Central Africa, mm -hmm. sometimes in Europe or around the Mediterranean. We see them all over the place. Well, they find these in Germany, right. and uh, for, for once they're like, okay, okay, we're not going to rewrite evolution on this one. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, that's a first. I mean, normally they're, they're more than willing to rewrite stuff all the time, but mm -hmm. apparently they found two well-preserved teeth, right. and you can see kind of a picture up here. And I know there's even a question over the teeth. You well, know, there's a question exactly about the, the canine tooth that they found. Yeah. Um, one of the research, one of the people that looked at it said they think it may just be um, a, a, a tooth from like a cow or something that's broken. <laughs> so that's the hard part about looking at fossils. Sometimes you don't always know what you're looking at. But yeah. that reminds but, me of Piltdown Man. Do you remember Piltdown Man? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. for all these years, you know, Piltdown Man was hailed as this beautiful missing link. They even met, drew a Piltdown Man woman right. um, that uh, was his wife. And, and uh, yet come to find out it was nothing but a pig's pig tooth. tooth. So yeah. after 50 years, like, oh, look at that. We've been looking so, at a pig's tooth. So. Yeah. So the problem with this, you know. these, these primate teeth is they look a lot 
like um, Australopithecus or Ardipithecus, which are supposedly ancestors, you know, some sort of ape-like creature. That That's right. Think of Lucy, if you guys Lucy, are familiar Yeah, an with ancestor that. to human. I know here in the audience, you know, they're, they're walking through the museum, so they get a chance right, to see some of the Lucy, Lucy exhibit and mm -hmm. that. But I know people out there, that's why everybody out there, they have to come to the museum so they can see the <laughs> Lucy exhibit. But. But, but the thing is, is Ardipithecus or even Lucy, Australopithecus, only lived about 3 million years ago, supposedly. But these primate teeth are from 9 to 10 million years ago, but they look a lot like the ones from 3 million years ago, which is very confusing to them because they shouldn't be around. They're like, oh, basically. they shouldn't be around at this particular right. time. Right. In fact, so, uh, you know, one of the researchers here, uh, Herbert Lutz, uh, he claims that the teeth are unlike anything found in Europe and Asia, but he's cautious about saying what that actually means. You know, you, here, let me tell you what that actually means. It means that animals came off the ark, okay, and they started to go to various parts of the world. Some of them thrived and survived. Some of them died out. Yeah. That's what that means. It's not a big mm -hmm. deal. It, it's actually quite easy to explain when you're thinking of it from a biblical viewpoint. Yeah. So they, so again, the people that did the research said, oh yeah, mm -hmm. this is what they are. The people that didn't do the research said, oh, we don't think this is what they are. And so once again, yeah. we have this constant debate, constant story that keeps changing about the past because they don't know they weren't there. Yeah. And um, we can only get the truth about that if we go to an eyewitness account um, like right. the Bible. Okay. Um, the title of this one just cracked me up. <laughs> All right. Exploding stars could have kickstarted our ancestors' evolution. I was like, what? Okay, so basically, here's the line. Okay, here's okay. the story. So, eight million years ago, they noticed that there was a lot of seemingly wildfires, okay, on the earth. And so how did those wildfires start? Why all of a sudden did we have all these wildfires? Well, they say there must have been a supernova that wasn't too far away that caused all these cosmic rays to come to Earth, which started more lightning, which caused more wildfires, which actually helped then our hominid ancestors to evolve. I did have you guys, no idea what the link is Did you guys there, just fall for that? I, I, I hope oh. you can discern through that. I mean, there were so Woo. many errors right there. It wasn't even funny just to think about. But... I actually looked up, you know, because they're like, oh, yeah, we have to have more lightning strikes. I'm like, well, how many lightning strikes do we actually have? Do you realize we actually keep track of that every year? There is, uh, on average, 44 lightning strikes per second, per second around the world. That translates to 1.4 billion lightning strikes per year. And yet we need more to come from a supernova to somehow, which they don't even know for sure if it'll actually cause the lightning here, Well, that's, to try to... Mm -hmm. Uh, this that is was, crazy. It was just total storytelling. I mean, Th and what's funny is. is one part of this says, the article says, it's, it's one of these nice stories that all fits together with the caveat that there's some uncertainty in some of these linkages. Yeah. Wait, so it doesn't all fit together. They don't even yeah. know if these cosmic rays could, like you said, cause more lightning. And they still don't link why the wildfires somehow led to our ancestors evolving. They never even explained that. It's just, it's absolute There's a lot of story storytelling. Telling. And yeah, I wrote on my article, I said, story. <laughs> File next to Cinderella, Shrek. Oh, yeah. There we go up, again. Right? So, <laughs> I have, so, yeah. But this is what you end up with. I mean, yeah. right, when you're not starting with the truth of yeah. God's word. Okay, from the Daily Mail. Um, God will be replaced by AI, meaning artificial intelligence, collective consciousness, says Da Vinci Code author Dan Brown. Hey, I bet Dan Brown has a new, new book coming out. You know what? He does. <laughs> <laughs> he does. So this is to promote his new book called Origin um, mm -hmm. that was inspired by the question, will God survive science? Right. He tends to attack God in very subtle ways. <sighs> and, uh, you know, this is, uh, th this is no different, essentially. But, right. you know, AI, artificial intelligence, it's mm -hmm. just mimicking what human intelligence really is. Right. And people have to program that. So, I mean, we, we always need to remember that. And uh, it, it's, it's not like AI will ever become God. It's not going to create from nothing, mm -hmm. um, you know, or die and resurrect, you know, like the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, you know, it's not going to control the weather by the power of his voice. You know, there's no way. You see, I think in one sense they're taking this idea of who mm -hmm. God is from the Bible and they're demoting it. And then they're trying to attack that. That's a straw man fallacy. Yeah. Well, and, it's, and really all it would end up is being a, um, a God made in man's image, right? Yeah. Not, not the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem with it. Yeah. 
Now, it wouldn't surprise me, though, if people, you know, based on a warped mind, might actually confuse artificial intelligence with God. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things it says in here, uh, Brown said, technological change in the development of artificial intelligence would transform the concept of the divine. Well, the concept of the divine actually comes from God and His Word. Mm -hmm. That's how we know who God is. So it has nothing to do with anything like that. But I could see people being deceived yeah. into something like oh, that. Yes. Well, and, and at the very end, Dan Brown even says, he says, well, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all share a gospel loosely. And it's important that we all realize that. Our religions are much more similar than they are different. No, well, no. They say, get the world Christianity is definitely series. unique. Um, and, and, you know, it's that whole idea that we all just need to get along, you know, and, and realize mm -hmm. our similarities more than our differences. And, and yeah. it's that mentality that is very yeah. obviously problematic. Yeah. So. All right. All another right. article on artificial intelligence. So I thought these went kind of nicely together. Humanizing AI, driverless cars to be trained on morality to make life and death decisions. So if it's going to be a driverless car, okay, yeah. you know when you're driving, there's certain decisions you always have to make. I remember one time I was driving up on this bridge and I could see this big, sharp piece of muffler in the middle of the road. And I'm like, okay, do I hit the barrier over here? Do I hit the cars over here? Or do I just drive over it and, and take the damage to my own car? I drove over it, got a flat tire out of it, which was probably the best choice of the, of the three mm -hmm. options that I had. Those are the kinds of options that a driverless car is going to have to make, okay? Right. Now, so that's MIT little... researchers started doing <laughs> this. In fact, is they, they started uh, to collect over 18 million responses on things. Now, when I look at this, they're getting the responses from people, so it's mm -hmm. just trying to mimic what, what people are already thinking. Right. But then I also go, you know, there's some people that make terrible decisions. <laughs> um, you guys probably oh, know people yeah. like this on the roads all the time. Like, no, oh, please don't. Hope artificial intelligence doesn't follow after that one. But, uh, I mean, that's the way they're trying to do that, and they're trying to utilize those responses to get that programmed in so right. that the artificial They call it the moral machine, can, can um, which is, again, based on people's choices when they're given, like, those kind mm -hmm. of no win scenarios, you know, where you're going to have to hit someone mm -hmm. um, in order to be able to supposedly. Um, yeah, now, you know, and it, it, it makes me wonder, you know, they're, they're trying to say, well, this is a good thing, you know, you know, should I make this decision to kill this one or this one, you know, in a tough situation? Now, I mean, never a good decision. It's, it's never a good anyone. decision. <laughs> right. You know, if somebody says, well, you know, why did this AI machine come over here and kill my relative? Right. Out, out of all people, you know, why? And they say, well, that was the more moral decision. Well, how do you make that decision? Yeah. As soon as human life starts weighing in the balance, I'll tell you what, it's, it's tougher than, than you might think. Yeah. And I think people think, oh, well, this will be a, a fairly easy decision to make, and I don't think it will be. Well, and eventually they said AI could result in operating a morally better system than any individual human can. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Okay, so first of all, humans, all humans are sinners. Even those, that are, those of us that are mm -hmm. saved by grace, we're still sinners. And there's no way that this AI can be saved um, mm -hmm. and even, you know, have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And yeah. so I'm thinking there's no way it's going to make morally better decisions than a human being. And so yeah. it, it's very, it's only as good as the choices of the people it's programmed by. Yeah. Um, and so that's obviously there's some innate problems there. All right. Um, a growing share of Americans say it's not necessary to believe in God to be moral. Okay, that, that, that to me just blows my mind because do you realize to be moral is to believe in God? So it's actually self-refuting right off the bat. Right, yeah. God commands us. God is the one in charge of morality. We're, we're commanded to, to believe in it. In fact, is, the Bible says we all have that innate belief in God in Romans chapter 1, and people we want do. to suppress that we knowledge. Want to suppress it. Yep. So right there, it, that's, that's self-refuting right off the start. Well, they want to, I mean, some people say, well, are you saying that atheists can't be moral people? I never said that. There are yeah. atheists that can be very moral people. My, my problem is they don't have a foundation. They don't well, have a basis they're for having it, yeah. to borrow from the, from the Bible to be moral, okay, right. to have a foundation for yeah. that morality. Because like you just said, there is no morality. There yeah. is no, how do you decide what's good and bad? How do you decide yeah. what's right and wrong if you don't have an ultimate right. standard? Yeah, I've had atheists come up and say, you know what, I, I believe that people should not murder. And I'm like, thank you for following the Ten commandments you see they have to borrow that from scripture yep. that's where that's coming from but you see if you actually throw the bible out you throw god out right. you can set your own morality to be whatever you want 
And then you can define that as good or whatever because you're no longer following God said. That's actually what Hitler did. Do you realize Hitler was actually trying to do good according to his own mind and according to his own beliefs. Mm -hmm. He thought the Aryans were superior so everybody else can be exterminated. And to him, that was a good thing. Yeah. You see, he redefined morality. He redefined good and bad. The problem is, as soon as you do that, boy, you've just destroyed morality in and of itself. Yeah. You've got to have the absolute standard, and God and his word are that absolute standard. Mm-hmm. That's why this is such a big deal. Yeah, there, there's actually an atheist. Just comment on here. He mm-hmm. says, wrong, I'm an atheist. I certainly know what's right from wrong. That's yeah. because God we wrote did, the we law just said on your that. heart. Yeah, you do, <laughs> but because um, you're, you're basing mm-hmm. right and wrong off the standard of God's word. What is mm-hmm. right and wrong? What does that even mean, right and wrong? Is you it, know, I've talked to a lot of, uh, you know, atheists who've been like, but, but abortion's good and right. Right. But see, that's murder right there. You right. see, they're redefining it. Yeah. See, they're not the standard for it. They need to check this stuff and test it against God and his word. Yeah, absolutely. That's where morality standard is. All right, we've been drawing iconic seal wearing, I'm going to let you pronounce this, Dim- <laughs> D- Dimatridon. There we go, Dimatridon, yep. wrong for 100 years. So this is actually not a dinosaur, okay? This is a, um, what do they call it, a paleo, oh, paleocus, pelicosaurs. Okay? You know what, I'm not even going to try them. <laughs> They're not dinosaurs, we know that It's one that of the much. belly draggers. You They're know, known by their sail, they yeah. their sort of sail fin here. Mm-hmm. And um, they used to think that their legs were really like sprawled out and they actually dragged um, their belly. Right. Think of um, a Komodo dragon or a, right. a crocodile, something like that, where the belly normally drags. But they've done more research and find they don't think that's really Right. Okay. Well, what they did is they, they found trackways, you know, where these things have been walking and mm-hmm. it, it, it didn't model, you know, having your legs sprawled out. It was more like they were under them and walking. Nice. And so, you know, they found more than one of these. And so they thought, hey, you know what? Maybe we're not looking at the, the, the bone structure quite right. Mm-hmm. And so they went back and looked at that. And they thought, hey, you know what? Maybe these are sitting more under underslung, essentially, which right. is probably a little bit closer to the dinosaur style, yeah. even though it doesn't have the same you know, uh, mm-hmm. hip structure there. And just goes to show you, it's really hard to establish these things yeah. <laughs> based on fossils and tracks and as you find mm-hmm. more things. And, and so it's, it's very challenging. All right, I'm going to skip to the last one. Okay, article. let's do the last one, yeah. Because we're running out of time. We're going to skip to this one. Why haven't we had alien contact? Blame icy ocean worlds. All right. So the reason that um, we we haven't heard from all these aliens that are out there is because all these other worlds are like super icy and they're all living under the surface. (laughs) Now you know. Yeah. Yeah. When I first read that, you know what ran through my head? You know, there's another reason that aliens may not be trying to contact us. Maybe they're not (laughs) there. Not there. (laughs) Uh, oh, I, I, I see this stuff and I read it and I'm like, really? Well, but, but people take this seriously. But this is, again, it has evolutionary underpinnings. It's That's called right. the Fermi paradox. And basically it's a contradiction between the paradox is that there's a contradiction between the fact that we don't have any evidence for aliens, but there's a high probability that aliens exist, at least mm-hmm. according to an evolutionary view. Because if life evolved here, life certainly evolved in lots of other places. And so right. we should have heard from these people by now, but we haven't. Because as it turns out, they, be, they may have no concept of space because they're living yeah. inside their worlds. Yeah. Right. So now we Okay. Know. A couple of things I do want to recommend. We talked about Neanderthals uh, in recent times here quite a bit uh, today as well. Uh, Dr. Terry Mortensen is the editor of a book called Searching for Adam. We are in a culture where sadly, even within the church, many people are rejecting that Adam and Eve were real people. Mm-hmm. And yep. so that naturally, that's where this book came from. One of the chapters in here is an excellent chapter on the subject of Neanderthal or Neanderthals, depending on who you're talking to. Um, but I, I do want to recommend this. It's simply called Searching for Adam. Uh, also, I wanted to recommend Dr. Jason Lyle has a book. He's an astrophysicist called Taking Back Astronomy. And there's a significant section in here on uh, ET, ET and alien uh, oh, uh, life. But yeah. it's a beautiful, full-color book on astronomy. And uh, it is, it's powerful. You know, I just, I love looking at this book and I've used it for reference a number of times, Mm -hmm. but I do want to encourage people to take a look at that, uh, Taking Back Astronomy is its name. Okay, well, we'll be back on Monday. I think Ken will be back here. That's right, we'll get the Australian accent back. (laughs) Yeah. Everyone Good likes on to you. listen to that. So, <laughs> so anyway, thank you. Why don't you give one more round of applause so everybody can hear you. There All we go. Right. All right. Send those emojis. emojis. Lots of emojis. All right. And we appreciate you being here with us today, and we'll All see right. you back on Monday. All right. God bless you guys.